Hi everyone. I can't believe it's almost been two months since I filmed an update. I have definitely taken a good break. Uh, I needed it. I just felt like I needed to unplug a bit. Truthfully, I don't think I've been coping very well lately in the past couple of months I've just felt like so much is out of my control in a number of different ways and I'm sure a lot of people feel like that at the moment with COVID. Yeah I've just felt really unmotivated and flat, probably depressed. Um, so yeah I've just needed to take some me time. I can't remember what I said in my previous video but I'm pretty sure I let you guys know that we had decided to do the ERA. So Liv had that done about three, four weeks ago now and we got the results. So the ERA stands for endometrial receptivity assay. It's a test to determine window of implantation and the receptive time in a cycle. So we just thought given we have one PGS normal embryo left and given our last embryo transfer to our gestational surrogate didn't work, we would just spend the money and do this extra test. I don't think our specialist fully believes in it and it is still a little bit controversial. Some specialists think it's great, others don't. At this point we're just willing to try. I guess it's just a question mark we can cross off and we just, it's a variable we don't have to worry about. So yeah, we got the results and there was confusion around those results. So I was originally told Liv, our friend and gestational surrogate, was pre-receptive by 12 hours and my clinic wanted to move the embryo transfer to make it earlier than the ERA was, which didn't make sense to me if she was pre-receptive. And so I called my clinic yesterday to kind of discuss that and clear the confusion and I was still told they wanted to make the embryo transfer earlier but it turns out she's not pre-receptive at all, she's post-receptive. So we had the results emailed and I received them today and so I've had a look at the little diagram. She's very close to being receptive but the test recommended the transfer happened 12 hours prior or from what I've researched she start progesterone 12 hours later. I think that's right. My clinic don't want to change the progesterone at all. They just want to bring the transfer forward by six hours. The issue is the ERA was done at 2 p.m. so 12 hours back is 2 a.m. which obviously is impossible so they were going to put Liv first on the list for that morning which works out to be about a six hour difference so six hours earlier. So it's not the 12 hours so I'm wondering if we alter the progesterone by six hours and maybe that'll balance it out. I don't know, it's all very very confusing. The nurse wasn't able to really explain it to me so we are going to have a phone consult with my specialist and hopefully she'll be able to explain it to us and work out a transfer time that we all feel comfortable with. The nurse was telling me that you know she's practically receptive um, we can leave the progesterone as it is and just move it, the embryo transfer forward by six hours but I don't know I've just I've spent all this money I want to do it as perfectly as we can and I do believe moving the progesterone changing that uh, could be beneficial. Hopefully our specialist will help clarify some of those questions. But yeah, so I guess it's good that we've got those results. Live cycle begins next week. So we're thankful that the results have come through in time before she begins her next cycle. I don't know how I feel, to be honest. I think I just feel a very overwhelming fear. I feel more scared than I do excited but it could be it, this could work and you know all we can do is try. In a way it doesn't feel like our transfer was three months ago. Experiencing the constant failures when it comes to infertility is just so draining and exhausting and 
yeah, it's just been challenging. Um, my dad has a terminal illness, so, you know, that's hard. And obviously coronavirus is hard as well. Melbourne just entered its second lockdown. There's so much still to be thankful for and our garden has been bringing us a lot of joy. We have been growing, beginning to grow our own veggies and things so that's been really satisfying. Uh, just before the second lockdown my friend Sophie and I were able to go to the Dandenong Ranges which is a beautiful area in Melbourne and I filmed a little video which I uploaded I think last week. <music> it and I'm so glad it helped you feel relaxed that was my goal because that's how I felt when I was in the forest and listening to all the birds and the kookaburras it was just really peaceful and just good for the soul <laughs> we happened to go on that road trip the day before lockdown was due to begin so that we got lucky there we didn't know that that was going to happen in that timing so that was a nice little last thing to do where we live we're right on the border of the lockdown so Liv and I we're neighbors we are able to still see each other which is good so yeah that's kind of the update I guess Liv has agreed to do a Q&A so uh, while we're not in lockdown, we should probably get a QA and a in quickly. Um, so if you want to leave your questions down below, please do, and we will try to film that video soon. I'll do a little story on Instagram so you can leave your questions over there as well. There's been a lot of questions about Liv and how she's feeling, so I think it'd be good for her to be able to share her feelings and thoughts before we enter another transfer. I hope you're all staying safe and well during this crazy time. This year is just nuts, seriously. Thanks so much for watching. I'll speak to you guys soon. Bye.